Hi again. This is our this is a notes on deposition and the things that affect deposition. And now that we've talked about streams, I want to talk about deposition in terms of how it affects what we see in a landscape. Um, and and so we can use that to help us understand the environment in which these these landscapes formed. Uh, if we can see certain aspects, we can link it back to streams or to glaciers or to gravity. And the, the, de the rate or the way that things are deposited helps us do that. So one of the things that affects deposition, and remember deposition is the dropping of materials, or weathering is breaking them up, erosion is picking up and carrying them, deposition is where, how they get dropped or how they get deposited. If you think of a, a bank account, uh, where you deposit money, you're putting it into the bank, so you're dropping your money off into the bank. That's one way to remember deposition. So as the medium, and when I talk about the medium of the transport transportation slows down, we're talking about water, wind, um, or uh, ice. When that medium, the thing that's moving, uh, helps to starts to slow down, the sediments begin to settle out. And that was one of the things that I talked about with streams, when the stream sl slows down that the particles start to settle out. And these are the way, this is the way that these things um, are, these things are, are deposited. Uh, the, the shape, how these things are affected. The rounder the particle is, the faster it, it settles. The, the flatter the particle is, the slower it settles. So if you think of a crumpled up piece of paper, as opposed to a rounded piece of paper. So if I take this piece of paper and I just drop it, it, it slowly goes down. If I crumple it up, it, oh well, it drops faster. So it has to do with the its resistance in, in air or in water. The size of the particle might be fairly intuitive as well. The bigger the particle is, the faster it'll settle. The smaller it is, the slower it settles. Um, so larger particles settle faster. And density. The more dense it is, the faster it tends to settle. Less dense, settles more slowly. So if we want to find particles, if we see things um, settling, the bigger, rounder, most dense particles tend to settle first. They'll be on the bottom. The flat, um, less dense, small particles will be on top when, when we look at the way that things are, are settled usually. Now, the sorting of sediments I mentioned uh, in one of the notes, previous notes, uh, sorted sediments uh, are where you have these larger, more dense, rounder particles settling out first, and you get smaller particles settling out at the top, or less dense, or flatter particles. Uh, unsorted is where the sediments are dropped, and no, there's no order to it, no particular order. They're all mixed up. And I wanted to show you a few pictures of that. So the, this is a great example. Uh, you can see all the particles of the same size. Um, or here, you can see the larger particles, then medium, and then small. And you can get successive layers of this. It's called graded bedding, as you can see there. You get big particles, medium, then small, big, medium, small. Here, you get it's all just mixed together. There's all different size particles um, sort of strewn together. Another great example of unsorted sediments, unsorted sediments. And different, different types of erosion and deposition cause different types of sorting. So uh, gravity will, will have, as I said, it will be unsorted because it, they, in a rock slide they just sort of all fall at once. And with streams, generally streams tend to slow down gradually. So what you'll have end up happening is as the stream slows down, the biggest particles settle out, and you'll get the bigger ones, and then the stream slows down a little further down, um, slows down a little bit more, and then these drop out, and then a little bit more, and then these drop out. Um, in general, uh, this is not this this is what happens with water um, in a lake. When the, when a stream hits a lake, you get the biggest particles, and then the medium, and then then the smallest. Um, the so you can see that this idea of sorting can really tell us, give us a clue as to, to how these, these things um, form. So again, here's this hor horizontal sorting um, is when a stream enters a, a large body of water, uh, the velocity slows down, and then part largest particles tend to settle out first. So if this stream is, if this is the stream flowing in here, and this is 
as, as the, the stream is flowing down in here. Um, it hits this large body of water, and when it hits that water, it slows down. And when it does, these big particles settle out. And as you get further and further out, you get into calmer and calmer water. So as the stream is, is flowing in here, it actually does create some current here. And so the water is still moving. It, it's just moving more, much more slowly than it was before. And as it slows down, it drops these materials. So it drops the biggest particles, then the medium, then the small, and then the tiniest clay particles settle out over here. That's when you get a stream flowing into a, a, a larger body of water. Vertical sorting is a little bit different. Um, it settles from bottom to top, and it, you get the largest, roundest, most dense particles first on the bottom. Then um, it, usually what happens is it occurs after a major event, and when I say an event, I mean like a big flood or a volcanic eruption, an earthquake where a tremendous amount of material gets picked up and carried all at once and pushed into the stream or into the, the body of water, and then everything settles and it sort of has a chance to, to settle down and then and what that ends up happening is you get the biggest particle settling at first um, then the medium and then the small and I've got some tubes that sort of show that um, that I'll give them to you in class you can shake them up and you hold them and you'll see the, the that process um, if you get a series of these events a series of floods or hurricanes um, after a year or even two years or three years, what you'll end up happening, what will end up happening is you'll get something like this. This is that graded bedding where you get a successive, over time, you get this was one event. And you can see that one event, big, medium, small. And then another event happens, another flood brings a tremendous amount of material into the lake or the ocean, and you'll get big, medium, small. The next event big, medium, small. And it's almost like tree rings. You can go back in time and, um, and, and see them. See, count how many floods or how many hurricanes there were. Um, that's, again, here's another example. That's what we call graded bedding. It's a, when a series of these events occur uh, at different times. You can count, count them up by the, the number of graded beddings there are. So you'll see these, these series, and we'll, and we'll do a, a lab in, in class or in lab class with, with this, and, and you can have some um, first-hand experience with that. So that gives you graded bedding. So that's deposition and how things are deposited. Generally, when you have wind or water, you get sorted sediments. Gravity or glaciers tend to not have graded bedding. They tend to just, as the glacier pushes material, it'll end up dropping it. And we'll talk about more, more about that when we talk about uh, glaciers um, in, in another set of notes. Um, one of the things that I wanted to show you, uh, the other thing is this, thing, this part of the reference table, and it's on page six of the reference table, and I'm gonna get this one out of the way so I can have a bigger version of it. And it's a chart on, on just how big, part, how big the particle needs to be, or how big the particles that a particular space velocity stream can pick up and carry. So if we look, this is the speed of the stream that can carry a particular size particle. And if we look, here is the particle diameter, how big the particles are, and here's the stream velocity. So if I have a stream that is traveling at 200 centimeters per second, and remember 100 centimeters is a meter stick, so 100 centimeters is about that big, right? So if we're moving at 200 centimeters per second, so we're going two distances every second. So it's moving pretty at a pretty good clip, uh, if you think about that. So 200 centimeters per second, I can pick up and carry an average sized about 10 centimeters in diameter. 10 centimeters um, is, is about, um, so a two, two and a half centimeters is about an inch, so it's about five inches. So a, co a good size, good size um, cobble. And that, you can see, here's, that's how we describe that. So these sizes, a boulder is anything that's bigger than 25 centimeters. So from 25 centimeters and up. Something that's between six centimeters and 25 centimeters would be a cobble. 
anything that's between 0.2 centimeters or 2 millimeters and 6.4 centimeters, that's what we call a pebble, sand, silt, clay. As we get smaller and smaller particles, you can see the, the speed of the stream doesn't have to be as fast to pick up and carry it. So clays get picked up by very slow streams. Silt, the stream has to be a little bit faster. Sand, it has to be a little bit faster. And then it really you start have to start getting pretty fast moving streams in order to pick up and carry these larger size particles. We're gonna spend a, we will spend some time looking at this chart and, and give you some practice with it, but I, I just wanted to introduce it so that you could see, um, see what's happening here. So you can see that if the water speed slows down, these are the particles that get dropped first, and then the pebbles, and then sand, and then silt, and then clay. So as, as you move from right to left on the chart, you get, as that speed slows down, you get smaller, 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 smaller size particles that get dropped out. And that's all for now.